Welcome to the Oatana Today Show, your community connection since 1991. I'm Linda Karnauskas, and I want to thank you for joining us on this Wednesday, October 5th. We have an exciting show for you today. Uh, in the first segment, we'll be talking with our incumbent, Greg Schultz, who's uh, on the uh, city council, and the candidate running against him, and Anthony Boyd. And then later on in our second segment, we'll be uh, visiting with Les Abraham, who's the incumbent for the uh, councilman at large. And running against him is Doug Voss and Hamid Torapur. So uh, you'll want to stay tuned for the, the, this, this program today. Uh, first, the Oatana Today Show welcomes your suggestions and comments regarding show guests and topics. You can do so by emailing us at the Oatana Today, sh Oatana Today at charter.net or by contacting the show's producer, Leanne Alt, at 390-5751. We will take a short break to hear a message from our sponsors, and then we'll be right back. So please stay with us. Hi, I'm Bev Cashman. I'm running for the House of Representatives in District 24A. Good government works when all legislators agree to listen to each other, to work together, and compromise to serve the best interests of their constituents. I will do that. As a legislator, my goal will be to help resolve difficult issues rather than simply blame the other party for failing to act. Please vote for me, Bev Cashman, on November 8th. Hi, I'm Jody Voison with the staff at Fairview Animal Medical Center, your other family doctor. Fairview Animal Medical Center is a proud supporter of the Oatana Today Show. Carbon monoxide is a colorless, odorless gas produced by gas-fired appliances in your home. The state of Minnesota requires that you have a carbon monoxide alarm within 10 feet of sleeping areas in your home. We suggest you have a digital readout carbon monoxide alarm. That way we were able to check and see what the uh, concentration amount was when the alarm went off. This has been a public safety tip from the Oatana Fire Department. Hi, I'm Betsy Linger from the Oatana Foundation. Your generosity has made Oatana a better place to live by benefiting our community, the arts, recreation, and education. Please consider a donation today. The Oatana Foundation is a proud sponsor of the Oatana Today Show. Welcome back to the Oatana Today Show, your community connection. And welcome, gentlemen, to our studio. Good morning, Linda. We have here Greg Schultz, and you're the incumbent uh, for the second ward. And then we have Anthony Boyd, who's a candidate running against you. And uh, Greg, share with us, what are, what are the uh, demographics or the uh, outline of where the second ward is located? Primarily the second ward is the east, northeast part of Oatana. If you go from downtown, if you go kind of out Rose Street and out Mineral Springs Road in a funnel out that way to the northeast, it includes uh, the area around Forest Hill Cemetery, uh, Darts Park, Mineral Springs Park, and Brook Tree Golf Course. And, uh, continues out to the extreme northeast part of the town. Okay, great. Well, let's get to it today. We're going to uh, ask you uh, questions uh, that represent uh, what you're thinking about, what you're going to do with your seat uh, for the oncoming uh, election and, and beyond. So we'll get started. Greg, um, tell us about your, yourself, your years in community, your current job position and volunteer work, etc. Okay, well, I'm a lot, lifelong resident of Owatonna. I graduated from Owatonna High School in uh, 1975, then continued my education at Mankato State University, graduating with a bachelor's degree in uh, finance and marketing. I then returned to Owatonna and worked in the banking industry here for 10 years and uh, honed my financial uh, skills. Uh, at that point in time, I decided I was ready to get into the family business, which is uh, Schultz Homes, and we uh, do, uh, we're general contractors and land developers. And I took that over that company in 1988, and I've been running that ever since. Uh, I've been married 36 years to the love of my life, Shirley. Uh, we have uh, three children, uh, Grant um, and his wife, Julie. And Grant and I started an adventure a few years ago. Uh, uh, the Busalas family approached us about purchasing Costa's Candy Shop. So we bought uh, Costa's Candy Shop, and now my son and daughter-in-law run that. And they're yeah. doing a very good job down there. Mm -hmm. uh, I have another son, Charlie, and his wife, Lindsay. Charlie works for the Fastenal companies, has for many years, and uh, Lindsay works the Oatanu uh, public school system. And I have one daughter, uh, Dr. Erica Schultz. She lives in Boston. 
She is a research chemist at Harvard, and uh, she's a really smart girl, and I never quite understand exactly what she's doing, but she's doing it well. And you have and, to be one proud papa. Well, I'm one proud papa. Okay. And of course, I have four beautiful grandchildren. Well, you gotta mention them. You gotta mention them, can't forget them. Uh, I belong to uh, numerous uh, civic and fraternal organizations, church organizations, been on numerous boards and foundation boards and committees. I spent nine years on the Steele County Planning Commission Mm -hmm. uh, many years with the Boy Scouts of America, and uh, just, just contribute as much as I could to the town. Well, thank you. Um, Anthony, I'm going to ask you the same question. Tell us about yourself, years in community, current job position, volunteer work. and Certainly. My name is uh, Anthony Boyd, Tony Boyd, as most people know me. I uh, grew up in Burnsville, Minnesota. Uh, went to St. Olaf, where I met my wife, um, now wife, 13-plus um, years ago. Um, she was a... Owatonna resident. Um, she grew up here and uh, soon after we got married in 2010 and had our first child in 2011, um, we needed to identify where our home was going to be. And it was an easy choice with all of the holidays and special events that brought us back down to Owatonna in the past um, to, to make Owatonna our home. And we've lived out on Briarwood Place for the past four years. Okay. Um, I, uh, um, as I mentioned, we have uh, uh, Clara, who's five, and Gavin, who's one. Um, I, you know, first and foremost consider myself a father and, uh, and appreciate the, the time that I get to spend with my kids. Um, for a job, I work at Zep Vehicle Care. I'm a corporate account uh, manager uh, specializing in dealership and convenience stores, supplying them with their uh, cleaning chemistries. Um, also support my wife with a small business that we own, uh, Division Street Dance. It's a dance studio up in Northfield, Minnesota. Do you have any volunteer work that you do? In the, in the past, yep. Uh, worked with Habitat for Humanity and Boys and Girls Club, um, also various uh, political groups that I'm active with. Okay. Anthony, I'm going to ask you the, this question. Hmm? It's a compound question. Why did you decide to run for office and what qualifications do you feel would, you would bring to this uh, position? Certainly. Thank you. Um, I've had a lifelong interest in politics. Uh, dating back to uh, first grade, I remember being visited in school uh, by a few different business professionals and I was most drawn to the, the politician uh, who was also a lawyer. And so I spent uh, my entire childhood thinking I'm going to grow up and become a lawyer. Um, <laughs> it wasn't until after graduating from St. Olaf um, that I enlisted in the Army. Um, and so I kind of had to take a, a sidetrack to uh, the, the law degree. Um, went off, got commissioned as an officer in the Army. Um, and with that, I've often drawn this uh, sacrifice of, of personal interest. And I've wanted to uh, be able to give back to my community, and I've done that through, again, different political uh, organizations in the past. But now that I've finally settled uh, my roots in this area, I've wanted to f uh, focus my time and effort here in this community. Um, what I'm interested in, the reason why I'm running for office, is I want to create accountability. I want to be um, accessible to the community. I want to be responsive to what their needs are. And I also want to focus on being impartial. Okay. And uh, Greg, why did you decide to run for office again? And what qualifications do you feel that you, have, you will bring to another term in, your, in this position? Well, Linda, I get, I get asked that question a lot. Why would you want to be on the city council? Um, <clears throat> I have a very good reason. Owatonna has been very, very good to me and my family over the years, and I'm now in a position in my life where I can give something back. Uh, the, the council takes a considerable amount of time. I don't think people realize how many hours we put in on the city council, and at this point in life, I can just give back for that. Uh, through several years, uh, past several years, we've uh, laid a good foundation for Owatonna to build off of, and I have a vision of moving Owatonna forward to the next level. And as the city grows, we're going to have to deal with economic, housing, and cultural issues. I want Owatonna to be proactive in its growth and not reactionary. And I truly, truly believe I have the qualifications to be an effective leader and bring Owatonna to the next level. I think the main qualifications that I bring to this position is that I'm a small business owner in Owatonna. I understand what it means to be fiscally responsible, meet a payroll, and I have also have considerable investment in the community of Owatonna. And my educational experience is in financial management, and I understand what it takes to develop a good workable budget and, and uh, have short and long-range plans. I have extensive knowledge in the construction business, and I understand how the city's infrastructure system works. That is a huge part of what the city council does, and I know what it uh, takes to maintain it. 
And I have over five years experience now in the city council and uh, I've spent a considerable amount of time learning how the city functions. And I think I'm really in a position now to uh, put my experience to work for the city. I would like to ask you the next question. And if you could answer this quickly, um, what do you feel are several important issues facing the city? Sure. Or, you know, mm -hmm. maybe just yep. one important one yep. so we can well, give that question yep. to Anthony as well. The, mo the most important one is always the, is, the, is the budget. And we always have to play a, the game of getting the best uh, uh, balance we can to meet the needs and support the services the citizens require. Uh, we've had several uh, state mandates lately and stormwater runoff. Uh, we continue to build, be building some storm ponds and we have to maintain them. We just had the uh, big rain last week and uh, the flood mitigation issues we put in place have uh, worked for the most part. And we have a few more to do. There's a few localized ones I'd like to work on. And the wastewater treatment plant's a big issue that's going to be coming forward and that, that's a large dollar item which we've been saving money for. And Anthony, would you? Uh, what are, is an important issue facing the city that you feel would need immediate attention? Or? Uh, the aspect of uh, immediate attention, I, I would support what uh, Greg's saying about our, our infrastructure and planning and taking the proactive approach. Mm -hmm. um, in beyond uh, the immediate actions, what uh, my campaign is really focusing on is revitalizing the heart of the city, uh, creating that uh, central identity, uh, opening up our community uh, to everyone within it and also those beyond, and uh, sharing the diverse array of talents that our community brings. Okay, um, now I'll ask you the next question. Uh, if elected, what do you hope to accomplish? If you could kind of s sum that up for us. Sure, um, there's two things really. There's what I know I can accomplish and what I hope to accomplish. What I know I can accomplish is being an accessible party uh, to the community. My phone number is 507-581-6566. I live out on Briarwood Place. I'm open and welcome to uh, anybody reaching out and contacting me so that I can uh, hear what your needs are and be responsive to you. Um, there's also then what I hope to accomplish, which is again revitalizing uh, our downtown community, uh, opening up our community and sharing our talents. Okay. My question in the same mm -hmm. idea, but because you are a, uh, an incumbent, what have been one or two of some of your accomplishments that you've uh, had since being in office? Well, I think my greatest uh, in, uh, accomplishment is when I took took office, uh, we were in the midst of the Great Recession. We had a lot of financial issues going on. And I took office, I came in to promote fiscal responsibility. And I think we've really achieved that. We now have a, a three-year operating plan, a five-year capital improvement plan, and a 10-year long-range plan, which we did not have in the, in the past. We have a, we've improved ourselves. We have a Moody's AA2 bond rating, which is the highest a city of our size can get. So I think my biggest accomplishment is uh, establishing a very stable foundation for the city of Owatonna, which we, now we can take off from that and do some of the things that will make it a better place to live. Great. And uh, Anthony? Um, we're, we're done. Okay. All right. Well, we're out of time. Oh. Right? So, <laughs> sorry. So, we're too talkative. So, yeah. <laughs> viewers, you have to come and hear when these gentlemen are out speaking. Come and hear them because there's a lot to, lot to learn. Right? A lot to learn. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, wish you Thanks, best Linda. of luck. Thank you. We will take a short break to hear a word from our sponsors, and then we'll be right back. So please stay with us. Hi, my name is Ryan Gillespie with Bremer Bank Mortgage. By trusting your home loan needs to Bremer Bank, you are guaranteed a personalized, straightforward, and honest experience from application to closing. We look forward to guiding you through your next home purchase or refinance. I didn't just want another job, I wanted a career, so I expressed myself. I was new to town and I didn't know where to turn for a job, so I decided to express myself. I decided to express myself, and they helped find the right career for me. Express Employment Professionals is in contact with thousands of companies in need of quality employees. Come in now and get the job you deserve. Express yourself today. Since 1988, the Oatana Area Business Development Center has been the part of the success of many area businesses. The center leases office space, and manufacturing space and offers on-site business consulting. The Owatonna Area Business Development Center is in business to help your business be a success. Hi, I'm Tim Anderson, the owner of Anytime Fitness, where we make getting healthy, affordable, and convenient. Anytime Fitness is a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show. Make it last.
life a little easier day after day Taking pride in our community Listening to what you say A voice you can talk to We're growing with you With you in mind In everything we do Oh, we're tired of public utilities Hi, my name is Dave Efforts with TPS Insurance. We're here to handle all your insurance needs. We are a very proud supporter of the Oatana Today Show. Welcome back to the Oatana Today Show, your community connection. And we are here interviewing Les Abraham, who is the incumbent for council member at large. And we're also uh, going to be interviewing Doug Voss, who is the candidate for council member at large. Welcome, gentlemen. We also would like to say is that we did extend an invitation to Hamid Torapur to be here. Uh, he said he would be here, but we have not seen Hamid as of yet. So we're going to go ahead and proceed as planned. Okay, we're going to start with uh, the first question is, uh, Les, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, tell a little bit about your years in the community, your current position, volunteer work, etc. Thank you. Uh, my name is Les Abraham. I am a candidate for council member at large and I was not born in Owatonna, but I grew up here. I uh, went to college, uh, high school here, uh, served in the military, and came back to Owatonna to work and uh, have a career in Owatonna. I chose to uh, run for city council member uh, a number of years ago and uh, am running for re-election at this point. I'm hoping that uh, with luck, I will continue to do that for another four years. Mm -hmm. Did you work at all through the, uh, all these years? What was your occupation? I worked as a design engineer at Wenger Corporation uh, okay. with a man, uh, designing the products that uh, Wenger manufactured. Okay. And uh, what type of volunteer work have you done? Volunteer uh, probably has run the gamut of uh, all the different things. I was involved in little theater mm -hmm. in Otana. I was involved uh, in am involved yet at a mm -hmm. local cemetery where I uh, am President Sexton of the cemetery. Okay. I was a part-time deputy sheriff for the sheriff's office okay. uh, for just retired from that after 35 years. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's been a busy uh, life. Yeah. Good for you. Doug, uh, I'm going to ask you the same question. Tell us about yourself, your years in the community, current job position, volunteer work, etc. Okay, uh, my name is Doug Voss. I, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, was born and raised in Oatana. Attended Roosevelt School, which is <laughs> no longer a school anymore. But and uh, graduated from Oatana High School in 1983. Uh, I graduated from Bethel University in 1987 with a business management and communication degree. Uh, I have a lovely wife Tammy and three awesome children. Um, I am the owner of Fame Awards and Specialties out by Charter Cable, if anybody's been there. Hopefully a lot of people have been. Um, <clears throat> and I've been doing that for 28 years. I purchased the business in 1988. So it's been a good run. It's been a great business, and it's supported our family through many years. There's lots of challenges in small business, but we've been fortunate to be able to figure out how to keep going. <laughs> Hopefully, I can keep going for a few more years. Um, next question was volunteers. Is there oh, anything yeah. you're volunteering in the community that you've enjoyed doing? I think I have coached every sport possible <laughs> for the park and rec through the years, uh, mostly hockey. Um, I was real involved in hockey. I played in college and really enjoyed that. And did some coaching at the high school as well with hockey, so enjoyed that. I'm on the deacon board at our church, so that's kind of a big deal. And, and uh, takes a lot of my time and effort and okay. so my next question will be directed to you okay um, why did you decide to run for <clears throat> office and what are the qualifications do you feel you would bring to this elected position well I happened to spend nine years on the county park board and kind of got a taste for uh, being involved in some government stuff not not a big deal but Jerry Peterson nominated me for that a lot of people remember Jerry and uh, I really enjoyed it. I worked with Steve Schrote, and we, we did some good accomplishments. In fact, one of our biggest things is being done right now. They're getting new bleachers and everything in the Four Seasons right now, which 
was a real big deal for us and, and it was fun to see some accomplishment and some things get done and, and I really enjoyed it. I didn't want to do anything more than that until my kids were grown up because they need to be your sole focus as far as I'm concerned. So my youngest is now a junior in high school and she's awesome so we decided maybe this was a good time to give it a shot. Okay. Um, Les, I'm going to ask you the same set of questions. Uh, why did you decide to defend your incumbency, and uh, what questions do you feel you would bring uh, if reelected? Well, again, uh, as incumbent, I've been involved for many, many years as a council member and uh, currently president of the council. Um, there are things over the years that I've uh, worked on that I would like to continue getting a, a finished, and uh, you know. You could say that for every every time you run for that because there's always things that you would like to see finished. But again, this is, uh, I think it would be a good time to get things finished, uh, start new things. Uh, we're looking at uh, flooding issues that we've had on the, over the years and we've accomplished almost all of all but one of the goals that we had set out and we're finding that there are other things that need to be done now. I'm going to give you the next question okay. first. Why do you, what do you feel are several important issues facing our city for the future? Well, the important issues are, um, I've been involved with the Highway 14 partnership, which is uh, trying to get four lane from uh, Dodge Center to Otana, which would complete that part of the loop. Um, it's been very important that we really get that done. Mm -hmm. And we have to work with the state legislature to get that done and the federal government because uh, we can't do it by ourselves. Uh, we've got some more po or drainage issues in the city that need to be taken care of. Uh, those are ongoing, but uh, we, we're down to another level where we need to start looking at fixing those. Um, expansion of the community uh, is another thing that we're always looking at is how we can benefit and uh, promote our city. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, Doug, what do you feel are several um, important issues facing the city? Well, I think definitely one of the big issues is the downtown area. How do we uh, have a vision for the future of where that wants to go? One of the things was at the last board meeting that Les runs, and he runs a really good meeting, so he's very good at that. But <clears throat> excuse me, one of the uh, issues was brew pub things and having the ability to bring some of that stuff in. But what does that look like in the big picture? What's the vision of downtown when some of these things begin to happen? And we got to step back and say, this is what we want things to look like in five years, 10 years, 20 years, or it'll just creep up on us and we won't have accomplished those things. So vision is a big thing, I think, for the city. Certainly budgetary things with, uh, you know, health care is a monstrous thing. I don't think we've even seen the tip of the iceberg with that yet and how that's going to affect city budgets and, you know, personnel issues and things. So I think those would be a couple of big issues for me. Okay. Now I will um, direct this uh, question uh, to you. If elected, uh, what do you hope to accomplish? Ooh. Well, I think my biggest thing is I think Owatonna is one of the greatest small towns you could ever live at. I've, I've coached and seen lots of other towns all over southern Minnesota, and Owatonna is definitely the cream of the crop, and the goal would be to keep that and maybe even take it further and make it really a center of commerce and, and life in southern Minnesota. Okay. And I'll ask you the same question, only because you're an incumbent, I will ask you what have been some of your accomplishments? <laughs> as a council yeah. member. Like. Looking back, uh, one of the things that uh, we, we've, uh, I've, I've been involved with is uh, from the very beginning when the dm &E Railroad came through Otana, wanting to upgrade. Uh, my goal was not to stop them because I knew that it couldn't be done. My goal was to get the best we could get for Otana, mm -hmm. and we accomplished some of that. Mm -hmm. uh, another one was the, the Morehouse Dam, which we had the opposition both sides. Uh, I was the swing vote that made it happen, and uh, that was accomplished, and I think we have a very nice looking park for that reason. Uh, we've got uh, storm sewer projects that we're working on that we've been involved with. Uh, we're uh, culminating those at this point, and uh, 
going to continue with that. Uh, it's just Highway 14 is another one. You know, it's just you know, we'll probably go on with us. Lesser ones, but those are the ones we've got right now. If I'm at home and I'm watching this today, uh, tell our viewing audience why they should vote for you, Liz. Well, I, I have the experience at this point. Uh, I am uh, I am retired, so I do have the opportunity to spend a lot of time in getting involved with uh, meetings and uh, things, etc. So. Okay. And Doug, why? Same question. Tell our viewing audience why they should vote for you. Well, I represent kind of uh, uh, the next generation and, and uh, some different viewpoints. Uh, being in business for 30 years gives you a little different viewpoint and having to kind of struggle for yourself to keep things going. Mm -hmm. um, different voice, just different opinion. I would like to say that if, if, uh, if I do get elected, uh, this is a good man here. Les is a great guy, and he's done a super job for Owatonna, and hopefully if I do get elected, he'll be my friend and help me learn how to accomplish what I need to do. Okay. I'm going to ask one question, and you'd be yep. thinking, both of you at the same time, uh, one or two word answer because we're running out of time. What is your long-term vision for the city? Quickly, Les. Growth. Okay. Economic development. Okay, great. All right. Well, if they've said something that interests you, uh, you can contact our ca candidates and start following them uh, during the election. We wish you both well, and thank you for coming and sharing with our viewers today. Best of luck to both of thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. We will take a short break to hear a word from our sponsors, and then we'll be right back, so please stay with us. United Way of Steele County has kicked off the 2016 campaign. This year's corporate campaign leader is Go for Sport. Our goal is $700,000. Be part of the change you want to see in the community. Give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Welcome back to the Owatonna Today Show, Your Community Connection. And now it's that time in the program when we share what's going on in the community. The Steele County Public Health Seasonal Flu Shot Clinic, ages 18 and older, will be held in Owatonna Thursday, October 6, 9 to 11 a.m. at the Owatonna Senior Place. If you are unable to attend a scheduled shot clinic, you may come to our office at 635 Florence Avenue, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., ages 6 months and older. Fall on the farm and farm to table at the Steele County Historical Society. Join us for Junior History Detectives and in an interactive children's program for pre-K children being offered October 6 at 9 a.m. Fall on the farm, preserving for winter. We'll let children experience what fall on the farm was like in the late 1800s and learn how food was preserved and what traditions are still to be used today. History Detectives, a program for kids in grades K through six begins at 6.30 p.m. on October 6, farm to table. From Seed to Seed will provide kids a hands-on look at the food cycle in 1900. The uh, Public Power, an American Tradition That Works, is being held Thursday, October 6, from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, visit us for refreshments, a photo op as a lineman, and a free Energy Star LED light bulb. And this is at the Owatonna Public Utilities. And the Steele County Historical Society will host a presentation on Owatonna's POW camp, uh, narrated by Jerry Ganfield on Thursday, October 6, at 7 p.m. at the History Center. Admission to the lecture is free for Steele County Historical Society members and $2 for non-members. For more information, please call our office at 507-451-1420. And the Steele County Humane Society will be having an Adopt a Highway Cleanup Day on Sunday, October 9th. So that's all we have for you today. We ask that you join us on Friday when our guests will be United Way of Steele County. We'll get an update and the Southern uh, Minnesota Initiative Foundation. So we will see you on Friday. Until then, have a great day. <music>